if you live somewhere like this and you're in the market for a new car. Then you might just be thinking about buying one of these, a family saloon. Hang on, hang on. Suburban cul-de-sacs? Family saloons? Is this some dodgy Sunday evening sitcom or what? No, Jason, love. Things have changed. The family saloon has been transformed beyond all recognition. Expectations have risen and people won't tolerate any rubbish. Absolutely. Which is why this week on Top Gear we have assembled all the latest generation high mileage hackabouts. This is where the saucy newcomers meet the established fast lane favourites and where you'll find out if the cars that you've never heard of deserve to stay that way. Plus, can our current car of the year, Ford's sparkling Mondeo, hang on to its crown? They're all contenders, sure, but they're not all winners. So, which of them holds the key to the luxury family apartment in Florida and which will get you no further than a ramshackle holiday hut in Hunstanton? That's the question. Now, whether you're a private buyer, a family man who's just shopping around, or indeed, the fleet manager about to write a rather large cheque for a job lot of the blighters, you're actually pretty lucky. There's no such thing as a truly bad car these days. Truly dull, on the other hand, is a cinch, and two of our contenders have tripped up before they've even got into the ring. The Master 626 may come from the company that brought us the world's favourite roadster, the MX-5. It may also be as spacious and well-equipped as its competitors in this £16,000 price bracket. But if being boring was a crime, they'd lock it up and throw away the key. Mitsubishi, meanwhile, have scored an amazing scientific breakthrough with their frugal and eco-friendly GDI petrol engine. Sadly, they've used it to power a cure for insomnia. It's funny because it's called the Charisma Elegance. And they say the Japanese have no sense of irony. Well, that's two down with eight to go in our top ten. Join us later when we continue our countdown to the best family saloon around. Welcome back to our saloon survey. We've already had two uh -uh's from Japan and it looks like another Nipponese no-no is heading down the walk of shame. So, where's Jason? Actually, I've just been having a little lie down in that hotel. It's just what you need. It's functional, reliable, great value for money. No, 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 not that, that. The Toyota Avensis. It's made in the UK, which economically is good. It's very, very roomy, which space-wise, it's good. The two-litre VVTi engine is refined and punchy, which mechanically is good. It also comes with a great warranty, and Toyotas, as we all know, always score very highly in the JD Power survey. So, customer satisfaction is good. But you don't just want good, you want great. Still, at least it's not lying on its deathbed. As the Grim Reaper gets ready to whisk Vauxhall's most unloved up to the big company car park in the sky, can I just say one thing? It's got a great engine. The Vectra SRI's 145 brake 2.2 litre unit is almost enough to give even this knackered old warhorse a new lease of life, except that its lumpy ride, flat-footed chassis and a dull interior all drag it back down to earth again. Still, if you're the sort of person who gets all juiced up over long service intervals, it could be the one for you. Me? Well, if I could just take that engine and put it in a sexy body... Ah, the Vauxhall VX220. Much better. Right, now it starts to get a bit tricky. Image is always a big factor, but from here on in, it's absolutely crucial. Warranties, ample specifications, sharp handling, you want it all. Of course you do. But would you still want it if it came disguised as? The Nissan Primera. The brakes, the steering, gear change, seat, engine, reliability, customer care package and equipment level are all highly tempting. But the styling, the image and the comedy moustache, on the other hand, are about as enticing as a family trip to the supermarket. Next year's Primera looks vastly better, but for now, well, the Nissan's only really good for one thing. Where to, darling? Just over there to uh, that Peugeot, please. Of course, it isn't just the Primera. Jump into a minicab anywhere in the world from Accrington to Addis Ababa and there's a good chance it'll be a Peugeot 406. 
They're as tough as old boots, extremely comfortable on long journeys, and they're good to drive with a fluid chassis on a fine ride. To be honest, there isn't much wrong with the Peugeot, except that it's feeling its age a bit now. Still pretty sassy looking, though. Sassy? Hmm, that's not quite the word that springs to mind when you think of the Citroen C5. Hideously ugly, those are two words that spring to mind, Vic. But luckily, you can't see the outside when you're on the inside. The C5 is arguably the most clever out of our 10-car bunch, stuffed to the gills with rain-sensing wipers, automatic lights and a multifunctional trip computer with GPS. It is relaxing to drive and its clever suspension setup gives it a lot more body cornering control than its unconventional looks would have you believe. But it's still a bit of a blob. And the thing is, even though it's so bloated and overbodied, it's not actually that much more roomy than some of its rivals especially in the back. So, with seven eliminated from the original ten, that leaves us with our top three. Join us later when we'll reveal what it takes to get into the Premier Division. Pets. Character, ability, personality. These cars are all playing right at the top of their game. They're not just humble family transport. They're truly gifted all-rounders. So, let's meet our top three, then. Actually, Jace, it's four. We've forgotten one. No, we haven't, have we? We have. We've forgotten someone. And it's easy to Who's see why. Because our star performer is a bit of a plain Jane. She's hiding her light under her bushel. She's the one in the NHS specs who never got a date. Oh, if only the boys could see under her dowdy image and meet the real her. The Accord from Honda, who currently supply not one, but two Formula One teams with engines. Makers of the sensational S2000 and the NSX, and yet they still have this duff image. You might think the Accord is fit only for the person whose other set of wheels come attached to a tartan shopping trolley, but you'd be wrong. This is just so complete. It's got a powerful, punchy 2-litre VTEC engine, a fine chassis, terrific motorway smoothness, impressive Euro NCAP crash test results, and a Made in Britain stamp. It's all here. The only thing that's missing is a dashing image. Image? Well, we try not to get too obsessed with it on top gear, but what the Accord so painfully lacks, the Volkswagen Passat has in spades. Few things in life at this sort of money feel this good. Honestly, we're talking about £30,000 worth of Audi-style quality at round about half that amount. So when you're buying a Passat, you're not only getting class, you'll be making your bank manager, your accountant, and your personal trainer very happy. Whoa, those doors are heavy. They say that cockroaches could survive a nuclear war. Well, if they can, they'll all be able to drive around in Volkswagen Passats. <laughs> Strangely enough, the Passat's weakest link is the way it drives. It currently outsells the Ford Mondeo across Europe two to one, but I doubt that many of those people actually enjoy driving very much. It handles like lumpy custard. Its gear change is unpleasantly notchy, and it isn't even all that fast. None of which really matters, because this is a prestige German saloon for people who can't quite stretch to a BMW, a Mercedes-Benz, or indeed an Audi. People who aren't adverse to a nice helping of lumpy custard. Well, pop pickers, our top two are much tastier. They're pretty evenly matched, and we can recommend either. They're not just playing the game, they've moved it on as well. Now, car design is a constantly evolving thing. Not that you would know it from looking at half the vehicles we've assembled for our family saloon shootout. So, congratulations to Renault for pushing the envelope. The latest Laguna is strikingly different and original, and proof that you really don't have to settle for a boring old box on wheels. Now, obviously, there's no point looking like Jennifer Lopez if you're planning to behave like Mike Tyson. Renault sensibly has compromised. The Laguna might not be the sharpest handling car of our bunch, but it still feels very nicely balanced. Its long distance comfort levels are exemplary, and it flows down the road with the sort of easy grace and poise that is simply beyond most of its rivals. It does most things very, very well, and nothing very badly. 
Unless you happen to be phobic about grey plastic, there's too much of it in what is otherwise an excellent cabin. And remember, it's just scored full marks in the Euro NCAP crash tests. The Renault Laguna is a stylish, modern, European car rather than a quirky French one. But its slightly soft character means that it can't quite depose our current car of the year, the Ford Mondeo. It's not quite a crushing victory for the brilliant Ford, but for this sort of money, there really aren't many cars around that can do the job of hauling shopping, the family and dogs around the country quite so thoroughly. Of course, nobody's perfect, and with thousands of new Mondeos now hitting our roads, well, I'm even less of a fan of the way it looks than I was six months ago. This lack of visual adventure hardly matters when you're driving. Ford worked incredibly hard to get the Mondeo right, and it has all the decorum of a bigger, more expensive car. And normally, I absolutely hate being a passenger, but it's no big problem in the Mondeo. This really does feel like a classy cabin. OK, it's not that imaginative, and I really don't like this nasty little clock here, but otherwise, it feels very high quality. And it's like a limousine in the back. Now, honestly, there's enough room for uh, our burly cameraman and the sound man, and they both had very large lunches, fish and chips, in fact, with onion rings on the side. Basically, the Mondeo combines opulence with a surprisingly sporty attitude. Then, when you chuck in all the traditional Ford virtues... A dealer in almost every corner, cheaper insurance, servicing that's not a complete rip-off, and... Well, you're left with a pretty convincing winner. On Top Gear next week, it's a roadster riot. The Lotus Elise is under attack. The Mercedes A-Class is longer, but is it stronger? And the Mini Cooper our guide to buying a slice of history. Stay with us for Stephen Poliakoff's new three-part series, Perfect Strangers. It's next here on BBC Two.